Hello everyone, Michael Jones here from Michael Jones Custom Knives. Welcome back to my channel and to my forge. In today's build, I'll be creating a new project. I'll be working on a custom folding pocket knife. It'll be a lock back design. And to create this lock back folder, I'll be using some steel that was left over from a previous project. If you saw my video from a few months ago where I created a feather pattern Damascus spider knife and I cut back part of that billet to save for a future project, that's the steel I'll be using today to make this knife. So sit back and enjoy the video. And if you like this type of video in blacksmithing and knife making, please come back and check out my channel for future videos. And as always, please subscribe. To get started, I've already sliced up the billet I mentioned from the previous build into three pieces. Then I'll be taking my template for the knife and cutting it out and then gluing that onto the steel so that I can start cutting out the components to make up the lock back. Before I grind out and profile the blade on my 2x72 belt grinder, I need to drill out the hole for the pivot pin for the knife blade. Once that's done, I'll take it over to the belt grinder and I'll profile out the blade. After I finish grinding the blade to the profile that I wanted, it's time to create the lock notch. So here I have the blade in a file guide and I'm taking my file and I'm starting to file out the notch. After cleaning up the blade with my Dremel tool, here I'm checking the size against my drawing of the blade to make sure I'm fitting within the parameters and size requirements. Now it's time to move on to creating the lock bar and profiling it and getting it to fit the lock notch.
finished creating the lock bar and I've got the face and the end of the lock bar fitting into the lock notch correctly, but I have a problem. The overall lock bar is setting up too high of an angle as compared to the drawing. And the only way to fix this is I'm going to have to take my torch and heat the lock bar and bend it down to match the drawing. After a couple of heats and corrections, I finally got the lock bar to match the contour of the drawing. I've now profiled and shaped all three components of the knife to match my drawing. Now I'm going to super glue the three pieces onto this piece of sheet metal and use my 2x72 belt grinder to surface grind them all down to the same thickness. Using my layout die, I'm marking a center line down the bottom of the knife edge. I'll use this as a guide as I start to grind in the bevels on the blade. Now that the knife blade is beveled and I have the plunge lines ground in, it's time to start working on the stainless steel liners. After super gluing the two liners together, I also super glue to the liners the different components of the knife, the lock back, the blade, and the butt end, so that I can use those as the template to drill out the pinholes. Once all the pinholes are drilled, 
I'll put pins in through the liners and attach the different knife components and then check the fit and the function of the lock back to make sure it opens and closes correctly. After checking the fit and function of the lock back and everything looks okay, it's now time to start working on the liners. So I'll start grinding the liners out close to the final profile. And once that's done, I'll also start working on the stainless steel bolsters. I'm making my bolsters out of 416 stainless steel. Here I didn't have any 316 stock, so I had to take a quarter inch piece and mill it down to 316 thickness so I could use it to make the bolsters. I'm using JB Weld to epoxy the bolsters to the stainless steel liners. You can either solder the bolsters on or use an epoxy. Epoxy is basically just as strong and is also waterproof and is easier to use than soldering. While I'm waiting on the epoxy to set up on the bolsters, I take this time to start working on the lockback lever, putting in the file work design on it and on the butt end. Now that the epoxy is set up on the bolsters, I'm back at the 2x72 grinder putting in the basic profile against the liners and the bolsters. Once I do this, I'll add all the knife components back and then we'll do the final shaping and profiling of the whole knife.
Here's the knife after the final profiling on the belt grinder. Next, I'll start working on some of the details that are left to do on the liners, such as milling out the recess for the ball bearings, and then starting to fit the mammoth molar scales to the liners. After attaching the mammoth molar to the stainless steel liners with epoxy, I've drilled out holes and tapped them to accept a 256 stainless steel screw. Here I'm attaching the screws using epoxy to set them in place so they won't back out. After the epoxy sets up, I'll surface grind the screws down flush with the scales. Here I'm drilling a relief hole into the scale for the pin that supports the lock bar. This will allow the pin to go all the way through the liner on either side and into the scale and give it a little more support. The next step in the process is to harden all the steel components of the knife. 
So I fire up my forge and I'll be quenching the blade, the lock bar, and the butt end in Parks 50 quenching oil. After hand sanding up to a 3000 grit finish, I now have the parts on my buffing wheel giving them a final polish. The next step will be applying my maker's mark before I put the parts in ferric chloride to give them a final etch to bring out the color and pattern. All of the components of the knife are now finished and it's time to do a trial assembly of the knife to make sure that the knife opens and closes correctly and that the fit and finish of the pins looks correct. 
once that's done, I'll do a final assembly, grease and lubricate everything, and then peen the pins and do a final sanding and polishing. The fit and function of the knife looks good, so it's time to do the final peening of the pins, which will be the permanent assembly of the knife. After I finish pinning the pins, I sand them down flush with the bolsters and it's back over to the polishing wheel one last time to do the final dressing on the knife. Once that's done, the knife is complete. The feather pattern lock back folder gentleman's knife is now finished. I hope you enjoyed this build. Here's the results of all the hard work. Hope you enjoy it.